The title of this section of the course is called The Chain Rule, and when you think about the name of it, it doesn't sound all that terribly important. I mean, so far we've talked about derivatives and trigonometric derivatives and all these things. And then you get to the section called The Chain Rule, and then you move on into really other big topics like the integral and other things. Don't underestimate the importance of this section. The chain rule is the bread and butter of calculus. And specifically, it's really the bread and butter of taking derivatives. So far, I've shown you how to take some basic derivatives. I've given you a list of trig derivatives that are basically a list that's just given to you and say, hey, use these. And I've given you the tools to take derivative of, of uh, polynomials like x squared, x to the third, and so on. And then I've given you some basic rules. You know, what if these things are added together? Functions of x, what do you do? Well, you take the derivative of the guys individually. What if they're multiplied? Well, then you've got a little bit more complicated thing to do. And what if they're divided? You know, some function of x divided by some function of x. Well, then you've got a little more uh, hoops to jump through. But in the end, it's not that bad. The chain rule is going to tell you what do you do when you have functions of x kind of nested inside one of, a, one of another. It's extremely powerful, and it's going to really open the door to let you take all kinds of derivatives of, of, of many types. You need to master the chain rule and you need to understand it. So watch this section a few times if you're having problems. Well, I'm going to open with kind of an example and I think I'll, I'll um, get your attention and kind of make you realize why it's important. What if I just told you, hey, take the derivative. Well, what, if you, what if you have the, the, the function um, sine of x squared? So it's not sine of x, it's sine of x squared, okay? So if you were to plot this, you'd have to, for every value of x, you'd square it, and then you would take the sine, okay? After you've squared the value, you'd take the sine. Well, at first glance, it says, well, this isn't so bad. I already know what the derivative of sine is, okay? The derivative of sine, I've already told you this, is just equal to cosine. I've told you that, okay? But this is not the same thing as this. You can't just sit here and say, this is the trap. You've got to make sure you don't fall into the trap. You can't look at this and say, well, since the derivative of sine is cosine, well, then the derivative of sine squared is just cosine x squared, like this. That's it. That's the derivative. No. Absolutely wrong. Okay? You cannot do that. The reason is, when I gave you those lists, uh, that list there of, uh, of derivatives, like the derivative of sine is cosine, that is true only for something that looks exactly like this. It has to be the sine of x, the cosine of x. It can't be the sine of the square root of x. It can't be the sine of 2x. It can't be the sine of x to the tenth. It has to be the sine of x, and then and only then, when you take the derivative, you get the cosine of x. You can't just generalize like, like what I just showed you, drew the big, the big x through. But work with me here and this will be clear. You know this fact is true, and you also know that if you were to take the derivative of x squared by itself, just by itself, you would get 2x. I taught you both of those things individually. So, if you were to guess, this function has something to do with sine, so the derivative is going to have something to do with cosine, and it also has some, this function has something to do with x squared, so the derivative is going to have something to do with 2x. The question is, how are they related to one another? I'm going to tell you the answer, but I'm not going to tell you why, and I think it will open the door. The derivative of this 